Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In previous videos, we've run our Jupyter Notebooks on SageMaker Studio, SageMaker Notebook instances, EC2 instances, we've run them on our local machine, and believe it or not, there's an option we haven't looked at yet. And I'm talking about Amazon LightSail. Amazon LightSail is an AWS service that makes it extremely easy to create a virtual server and to start using it in minutes. And I really want to say seconds because it's so easy. So let's see how with just a couple of clicks and a couple of command lines, we can fire up a Jupyter Notebook on an Amazon LightSail server. And we'll see that this is possibly the most cost-effective option we can find. Let's do it. Starting from the AWS console, we open LightSail. I'm using the Ireland region here, but you can use any region where light sale is available, of course. Okay, it says good afternoon. That's a polite service. I like that. We can then proceed and create an instance. I'm going to stick to Linux. I don't need any of those apps. I'm going to just install the OS and I'm going to use Amazon Linux too. You can add a launch script, so it's basically a shell script that will be executed as the instance starts. So I'm just gonna update packages, install Python 3 and uh, GCC C++ because uh, one of the dependencies we're gonna need for Jupyter uh, needs the compiler. And I'm gonna add Git because you always need Git. <laughs> okay. Um, let's not use the default SSH key pair. Let me show you how to use your own. So just click on create, create, yes. Jupyter demo, generate key pair, download it. Okay. So then I need to um, move this to the proper SSH directory. Yes, and I need to set access rights for this. Make it readable by me only. Okay, otherwise SSH is gonna complain. Now let's see what instance type we can pick. So here you can select from different criteria, but price is the most important for me now. I'm trying to find the really the least expensive option here. Uh, and this is the one, $3.5 per month, first month free. And for this, I get half a gig of RAM, one vCPU and 20 gigs of SSD storage, which really should be enough for Jupyter Notebooks, I hope. Let's see if we can fit all of that stuff in half a gig. Okay, so we go with this. Let's give a name to this instance, we'll call it uh, Jupyter. And we can just go and create it. Okay, the instance is running. So now we just need to grab its IP address. Uh, we could connect using this browser-based thing. So you can use that, that works for you. But you know, I'm old fashioned, I suppose. I'd rather have a, a proper terminal. So we'll just grab this thing, public IP, and then we'll just use the key we created. Username is EC2 user. And voila, as we say. Okay, so let's check Python 3 is installed. Yes. Okay, so we should have pip 3 as well. Okay, so now we can just go and install Jupyter and Let's install scikit-learn, numpy, pandas, <laughs> which I'm guessing we want to use, right? Okay, so this only takes a few seconds. Okay, so now everything's installed and we should be able to fire up our Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and the default port is 8888 which means we need to open it, right? But don't worry, this is really simple. No need to worry about um, security groups and everything else. Uh, the light cell console makes it very, very easy. So we can simply add a rule and say, hey, I wanna access 8888. 
Um, by default, this will be accessible by everybody, which is probably not a great idea. I'll keep it that way for the demo, but you definitely want to restrict it to your uh, own IP address or uh, your uh, company IP address range, but don't leave it like that, okay? Create it. And, you know, I could delete this uh, HTTP port. I don't need it. Okay, I'll just keep SSH and my Jupyter port, okay? So now okay, so now if I just grab the IP address and connect to port 8888, Yep, I get to the Jupyter screen. I can just get the token, connect. Yep, okay, so now we can, of course, create a notebook. And let's check, we can import everything here. Yep, all right, this works. Okay, nice. And obviously, we can also open a terminal and we can use Git and we can bring our code and we're good, right? So how much memory do we have left here? Oh, we have quite a lot, okay? So yeah, we have enough memory to, to work, definitely, yeah? Uh, we can see those 512 megs and uh, yeah, most of them are just in the buffer, but... Uh, we can definitely work, right? So you shouldn't have any problem running Jupyter on uh, on those uh, tiny instances, right? So long as you're not loading, obviously, <laughs> gigabytes of uh, of data in your notebook. But for a quick, you know, quick experimentation with a fraction of the data set, should be fine. And this is only going to be three point five dollars a month, right? So um, I think that's pretty that's pretty efficient. That's okay, so once we're done, of course, we could stop Jupyter. And um, if we go back to light sail, let's go home. Yes. Uh, so we can stop instances. And of course, we could delete them, bro. just like a, a normal EC2 instance. All right, that's what I wanted to show you today. So. If you want a you know no frills environment, very easy to set up. If you don't want to work with SageMaker for whatever reason, if you don't want, don't want to mess with uh, EC2 instances, if you think that's too complicated, think this is really uh, the simplest way, right? So let me know what you think. See you next time, and until then, keep rocking.